What's up, Power Painters? This is Taylor Payton of TaypayArt.com and PowerPainters.org coming to you today with another Power Painters tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm basically just working on a super rough sketch that I was doing while I was with some friends at the library. Uh, sometimes on Thursdays, I like to go and work with some of my fellow artist friends at uh, the local library. You get like a uh, private room and everything if you got a group of people and it's free. So it's just a nice collaborative workspace and it's a good time to sketch because I don't really have all of my attention about me and so I can't fully flesh out an idea in vivid detail because I'm talking with friends and having fun. So um, it's still a creative environment. I just feel like it's best to know when you're going to be doing certain types of work or certain parts uh, in the pipeline. And since the sketch was so rough, I decided I needed to lay in some idea of construction. Now the construction doesn't have to be absolutely perfect or anatomically absolute. Um, I'm using the word absolute a lot. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be incredibly absolute. It just has to be giving you an idea of what the shape language is going to be like, what the pose is. I'm drawing through the form, and this is basically just figuring it out. It's really taking the idea that is just super rough and uh, only indicative of so many things and trying to figure out how many other things are indicated that are not shown in the first version. And most of those things happen to be shapes, design, volume, and things of this nature. Uh, you have to kind of work out all these different elements and that's why I set up a quick little like perspective extrapolation in the back there. It's not perfect. I didn't put all the lines absolutely on the point, but it's approximate enough for me to flesh out some shapes and space. And after I had constructed the figure using different colors and separations, and I had an idea of what the elements of the picture would be, then I moved to stage three, which is doing some more sincere lines. Uh, everything before was just to figure it out. It wasn't meant to be pretty. It's just meant to give me an idea of some of the fundamentals I'm going to have to use. Uh, some of the shape language I'm going to have to consider and things like that. So after that's all laid in and I have that skeleton, that mannequin, which I um, show you how to build in the beginner drawing course as well as the beginner painting course, um, I just start working on top of that. And this character is actually a lot, now that I'm looking at it, like the um, the main hero pose dude of the beginner drawing course. It's kind of funny. Uh, I didn't mean for it to be that way. He's actually kind of a mix of the beast dude, because in week eight I do a demo uh, where I draw like a, a bestial head or a more like beast man type countenance and also a dude with a hat very similar to this. So it's kind of like a mixture of those characters in a really weird way and it was totally unintentional, but uh, I put them on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. These are, you'll see the end drawing and see that it's kind of like both of these concepts were fused in a way. And that was, it's weird looking back at that now or even making that connection, but um, I guess I'm going on this crazy tangent because there's only so much you can say about line work. Like I'm going in and just trying to take steps to make enough marks to figure out where my next type of style or idea is going to be like. And I'm going to fail a lot at this stage. Even though I've already planned some stuff and worked out many of the shapes, there are still so many more elements I didn't include in the stage two drawing, which now need to come to fruition somehow. And usually that's a very approximate manifestation. It's not really the final until it looks good enough to start kind of becoming the final. I'm sort of doing the rough sketch and the line work simultaneously. It gives you a very sketchy style even though there's still some architecture under this. It's just easier to be sketchy when some stuff's already figured out. Otherwise you tend to, I find, rely on it too much sometimes and you don't want to be sketchy just for the sake of being sketchy I would say like it's more of a it's more of a natural evolution and even so it it takes like a conscious decision to choose to make really clean lines or choose to make really sketchy lines and there's always a lot of erasing involved but essentially it's about trying to get something that looks like it could be a finished drawing. And if it's sketchy, 
it's sort of like a so be it. I'll just sort of run with that idea. And since I drew that hat first, I was having such a difficult time, you see, like trying to get what the skull and the face plate was going to be like. And so I have to build those things in. I have to go in with even more architecture and layer it on top of what I had already done. So much of the creative process, for me at least, is an incredible amount of layering and breaking problems down to a degree where I can understand them. And if things start to harmonize, then I know I'm doing well. And if it's not coming together, then I have to keep reassessing and redrawing until I have a more composed piece, until the ideas are mixing with one another as opposed to fighting, or the proportions are more accurate rather than uh, a sconce or just tipped or topsy-turvy in some way. The total drawing took about an hour, and I think it's pretty decent how it turned out. I, it's kind of funny at the end, if you saw like the preview image of this YouTube video. I had to go in and turn off the hat, but at the very end it's going to come back. But it feels like, since it went away, at the very end, bringing it back, it's like I felt I did all this work just to make sure that that hat was going to stay because I really liked it. I'm not going to lie. When I first drew it in, I'm like, that's a pretty nice hat, but I can't figure out how the cranium fits around it. So I had to go in and draw that. And then I figure, well, the hat is just distracting me. I need to get it out of the picture plane so I can focus on some of the more integral elements before the hat actually does come back. So I had to prioritize uh, based on what the image needed to become more full, become more accurate. And this is still a pretty stylized, you know, rendition. I'm not looking at photos. I didn't do a bunch of studies prior to this. I did do a self-portrait today when I was hanging out at the library from my a picture I took on my laptop webcam, but that's about as far as I got in terms of having preparation for this. And I think that the more you prepare for something or the more iterations or the further you pers like pursue a theme gives you more depth and ability and you don't have to fuss around as much like you see how much I'm just getting rid of stuff and going back and redrawing and just it's a really tedious process when you don't have everything figured out and I'm also flipping a lot to keep shifting my perception um, I remember being a little frustrated after a certain point like things just weren't reading the way I wanted them to and I needed to go with something I could feel excited about in terms of a narrative or an idea because that's something that I find my work has often lacked for a while and so these are things that you have to keep at the forefront of your consciousness until they change until you change the the habits you've been into and so I've, I've given my characters weapons forever like it's just oh dude with a sword girl with a shield guy with a gun uh, I don't know, frog with a mallet. <laughs> it's like, it's just sort of a character design, but when you're going for a more illustrative style and something feels more like a comic panel or a, like a movie storyboard or something, you have to imbue some narrative. It can't just be frog with a mallet anymore, unless that is really relevant to the story. And in this case, I wanted a teeny bit more story that kind of pierces just a couple levels beyond Dude with a Sword because as you progress in your craft, you begin to realize that, yes, there's a lot of beauty in the technical aspects, but you really need to start having something else there, or people aren't going to be able to connect or feel like they can relate or get an emotional reaction, because art is just a medium, it's just a language. I talk a lot about shape language because that's how you gauge how certain aspects of the art are working. Uh, the shapes will speak to you visually and you have to kind of feel that on your eyes. You can feel like, oh, those two are not working together. I need to do something about that. Erase, redraw, etc. cetera. Um, but really what I'm getting at is that there are times where you just have to add more of that Z axis, that depth. And I know I keep harping on it, but it's it's something that's really important. It's as important as squinting. You know, when you're creating an image, if you keep squinting, your perception keeps shifting, and you begin to see the the aforementioned like uh, 
shape language and that will allow you to make better changes and uh, ultimately all that technical stuff is there to best convey what the idea is, what the narrative is, what the feeling is. And in this case, you have to think of like, well, how do you put a narrative here when there's just a character? You have to give them an emotion. You have to give them a, an expression. And in this case, it's anger. He's not like completely pissed. He's just kind of annoyed. He's sort of like ready to go in, in some regard. And I suppose that, that shoulder drawing, now that I'm looking at it, it wasn't so bad. I could have rolled with this. It's just, um, I was noodling and thinking about the design so much of his stuff and the design ends up being secondary but looking at this I realized I could have kept it because I'm kind of I'm kind of all right with a lot of what's going on but I fuss around and noodle with it some more but um yeah the narrative is to circle back more about the expression of the character what's going on in the scene how you're making that apparent and moving forward in my work at least it's something I'm trying to to get more of in there you see I'm always spending a good amount of time on that face because since we're so close that's what we're connecting to and you see me rotate the canvas that is yet another perception shift you gotta keep yourself seeing the image in a fresh way you gotta keep seeing it afresh because if it gets stale to you then you're gonna start slipping and letting mistakes get by that should not and you make too many mistakes then it's like you eventually your perception is gonna shift again and you're gonna say oh gosh there are so many mistakes I wish I had been fixing these along the way and not letting them accumulate and then it's gonna be overwhelming emotionally and you have to either scrap the piece or you know backtrack or whatever so just uh, keep yourself fresh. Keep your perceptions fresh as you're drawn and working. At this point, I was fairly satisfied with the face and the proportions and such of the skull. So it was time to move on to the secondary focal point, which was going to be his hand gesture. I had already broken down the shapes in the previous drawing, so I really just wanted to follow a lot of what I had already figured out. This would be my third time redrawing it, and I'm basically just replacing those parts, those rough, more robotic shapes with more organic ones that follow the same guidelines, the same sort of posturing. And he looked like a fairly fuzzy dude, so decided to roll with that when it came to drawing the forearm, which again had already been mostly figured out. Gotta figure out that freaking pinky finger. Spend some good time looking at your hands. Just check them out. I mean, they're presumably at the end of your wrist, and they're difficult to draw if you don't examine them, really know them, feel them out, get a deep understanding of the shapes and reasons and revolutions of the hand. Because it will make your life as an artist so much more fulfilling and much less frustrating. Especially if you want to be able to use figures don't run from hands. I spent a lot of time running from hands, but the hands will catch up to you, and they'll be mangled because you can't draw them well. And at that point, you're going to have to ask yourself, am I going to keep drawing these figures that have pretty good faces and pretty good bodies, but really mangled, gnarly hands? I'm always going to hide the hands in the pockets. Hands shouldn't always be in pockets. I guess, I guess I've got to face it. I've got to face those hands. And then you start working away pages and pages of your sketchbook to begin this journey of understanding regarding all of those different structural changes and the pillar that is each finger. And after probably two or three pages of drawing your own hands, drawing hands from reference, you'll start to feel a little bit of a click. It'll be like, oh, 
okay, so these pieces do this, and this is how they interlocked, and this is how far they can move, and a lot of questions are answered for you, and so you can begin to already experience an easier time doing them from imagination, or even turning them into simplified architecture and finding out how to pose them even if you haven't done a lot of that particular pose. That's one reason why we learn the mannequin. It's because you can uh, really use it to simplify things and solve problems because as an artist your drawings are going to be strengthened by having that principal understanding of what makes solid draftsmanship and how to construct things in a way that feels dimensional and solid and there are ways to add form and depth and value and all these things come with time it's like I, I look back on my journey and it feels like I've been at it forever. It doesn't feel like I just started. I mean, sometimes it does when you're really having a hard time, but when I think about how far I've had to come in terms of, like, doodling at 14 or even younger than that and making it to this far, it's like, really, all it took to see improvement was consistent study and application. It was just taking courses and going to art school to some degree and making the decision that you wanted to see your work improve and to make your taste up of artists who were vastly beyond your like reach in terms of technical ability you you make kind of heroes out of them and their work and then you start to break that work down and say how can I be kind of like my heroes in my own way and then that journey propels you upward more so, figuring out what they know that you don't, what they're applying that you're not, and not comparing in a way like you're trying to be them or even beat them, but using these principles that transcend all styles and all types of work that allow you to build stronger pieces. And you'll find your own way to learn those principles even. I mean, there, there are common understandings and they're really good things like value scales and um, plumb lines and lost and found lines and all that, but eventually that stuff starts to come intuitively and you can start to focus more on the subject matter, the narrative, the nuances, the details. And so we finally wrap this one up or at least get close to it and you see that the hat has made its reappearance and he's really close to it he's pointing at it with that sharp index finger and I'm just thinking to myself at this point I did all this work just so I could keep that hat like I said earlier but I figure I'll just add a little icing to the base that it is and give some shading add a little more depth and a bit of mood. It's just a two-tone value separation. Just white and a shadow, which we represent as light. So be a pretty workable style for like a graphic novel or like a storyboard. Although I don't know if I'd spend an hour on a storyboard unless it was I really had a good amount of time to work. But yeah, this is basically the end of the video. I want to say thank you for watching and that I hope that you were able to glean some things from this in regards to your own artistic development and uh, just kind of sharing with you the journey that I've experienced thus far and hoping that it allows you to see that there's still so much further for all of us to go and yet it's just a really fun journey and in the end it was all for this stupid hat yeah but that's um that was kind of my little way of saying I did a lot of drawing and it took a lot of layering and figuring stuff out and it was a lot of work but um, the stupid hat could be representative of just like finishing something being satisfied with something you created anyway that's about it for now check out the uh, description box for all the courses I mentioned in the video you can acquire those there um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one happy drawing happy painting and happy creating